that life, I am so making proof that you were not an OD for the good video. So if you're new to the channel, I am just a country missing girl living in North Carolina. So y'all, the garden was in need of a major cleanup, okay? All that rain, y'all, that we had got, oh, oh my goodness. We're dealing with Japanese beetles, okay? Yes, they're here. But one thing I have noticed, they are around those marigolds. Now last year, I didn't have to deal with Japanese beetles because I'm thinking I didn't have marigolds. This is my first year um, growing marigolds in the garden. I don't think I like that. Um, but I did give it a try because, you know, so many people had suggested it. But I did have a couple people say that they bring unwanted bugs to the garden. They bring unwanted bugs to the garden. Okay, um, but that just depends on your area, and you know what happens. You may you may have a success. So mine grew very well, but those Japanese beetles was all over them. I mean, it's like right there. But I needed to go ahead and take down my squash plants and stuff like that. So that's what I'm doing. I mean, I did not take down the ones that um, I had tried to propagate the other day that I had showed y'all. But all the rest of them, they have just reached their time with all their rain, the um, vine borer and everything and went through it. But, y'all see, I harvested a lot of squash and zucchini, y'all. Yes, I did. So I got a lot in the deep freezer and I'm happy about that. So, clean out all the buckets because I got to move this garden around and get ready for my fall crops. Um, and you know, a couple more things that I'm going to start that's not really fall crops, but you know. Now, I told you guys from my area that I was going to be starting my fall crops come August 1st, okay? And it's just because some of the things that I'm starting, that is a good time. And now I may get super excited and go ahead and start some, um, you know, before then. But a lot of people was like, oh, you're supposed to start your fall crop before July, not I. Y'all know I don't follow any rules. It is what it is. I'll be starting my mid-July up until the beginning of August, y'all. So, yes, y'all. So, I'm just going to continue cleaning out these buckets, y'all. Cleaning out these buckets so I can get more stuff in them. If y'all been on my channel, especially since last year when I decided to bring gardening to the channel, then you know how I do. You know how I do. I go ahead and try to get the job done so we can get more stuff growing in these buckets to equal more food. Now, I got a surprise for y'all at the end. Well, if I don't down in this video, um, you're gonna be shocked about what you see me do, okay? Um, but yeah, I'm cleaning everything out and I'm just gonna let y'all enjoy me doing the rest of this. So I'm gonna be quiet, okay? Enjoy, y'all.
Okay, y'all. So right here, I'm just going over there, you know, looking and trying to figure out what I'm going to do next with these tomato plants, y'all. So, I mean, I grew a lot of tomatoes and a lot of different things and a lot of varieties to show you guys that, yes, you can do it in, you know, five-gallon buckets. Um, But, y'all, it's very important that we grow what we can eat. I didn't mind it because it is how I can show someone how much food and different types of food and variety that you can grow in buckets. I will do it. So, yeah, I took one for the team. Because y'all know I have dirt. I can't eat no daggone tomatoes like that. <laughs> this tarp some so I can bring the new babies over here to this home okay stay tuned So y'all are seeing me put a tomato cage on a tomato plant. So yes, hubby had bought some of the tomato plants over from the other side. And we decided to put them along the fence. So I am caging them. Now, some of the branches um, came off and that is okay. I mean, it's hard to kind of put a tomato cage on a tomato plant or any plant that's an already started growing and kind of, you know, wild um but for the tomato plants i don't care because they grow back very quickly and it is fine and if you want to make multiple tomato plants go ahead on you can definitely do that i just stick it in the soil and it's gonna look sick for a little bit but then it'll come right back up and so i just had a lot a lot a lot of tomato plants y'all and like i spoke to y'all before I did that, well, early in the video. I grew a lot of garages and stuff to show you guys. You can grow all types of things, all varieties in a bucket, okay? I have a lot of new people to the channel that probably was not watching. Well, if you knew you wasn't watching last year. But, you know, this is what I've done for years. Well, I've known how to do this ever since, you know, a child. And when I first um, attempted to start back growing a couple years ago, I was doing container. And so when I decided to bring it to the channel and show you guys how to do it, you know, putting them in buckets to me is the way to go. Y'all already know I put everything in a bucket. <laughs> container, it is what it is. I love it. And this is another reason why I love container gardening. I always have, always have for years. I love it for this reason right here. I can move my plants wherever I want to, okay? I can take them with me, you know, you name it. So that is why I love container gardening so much, so much. And we all different, and it's okay. We're going to like different things. Do what's best for you. But just me, I'm letting y'all see what I like. And this is what I love. Being able to move my plants wherever I, I feel like it. Y'all know I'm OCD, y'all. It's okay. I'm always moving stuff around. <laughs> but no, I really needed to get some more room over there in that area. Because we got a lot of melons and stuff. And my vision was to have my melon plants to just grow all out on the ground over there but I had to put plants over there because I had no more room okay so I did keep a couple tomato plants but y'all gonna see later in the video I end up getting rid of a lot of them like I say I can't eat tomatoes so any tomatoes I grow 9 out of 10 will be donated any more than I have um 
and that is fine and then it goes to good use okay but a lot of them i did get rid of and like i say it was just to show y'all Okay, y'all, this one right here was just very, very wild. So, I just went on and cut the top of that one and um, put a tomato cage on it. <laughs> and um, I am going to make another plant out of that one. I'm going to propagate, propagate that one. So, that is what you're seeing me do right here, okay?
some of the pepper plants over just to give a little bit more room um especially when i'm walking through and harvesting and stuff like that so that is all i'm doing right now some um peppers have fell off where it was already like rotted and stuff like i told you all that rain and stuff so i was just throwing them away as i saw them but yeah just moving things around right here y'all so i'm back over here where these tomato plants are not the ones that's against the fence but the ones that i bought um from over here to the fence if that makes sense um but i am getting rid of a lot of these tomato plants that i have over here um i don't need them anymore they have served their purposes which was to motivate y'all to grow and to show that you can grow different types and also that just because it's a tomato plant the depending on the, the variety some grow big some grow slow some grow wild i mean it just depends on what it is so like i said i don't need all these things because i can't eat tomatoes so i'm gonna be putting stuff in it that i can eat which go back to what something i said earlier grow what you can eat now I didn't mind growing a lot of things because my goal was to motivate y'all to grow. I said that earlier. Um, so I am very aware and that's one of the rules of gardening, okay? This is not something that I just learned. This is one of the rules. You want to grow what you're going to eat. You want to grow what you, if you plan on um, like doing wholesale or, or selling to, you know, other places, businesses and stuff like that then you know you will grow varieties and things that you won't eat but if you just growing for yourself your house your family you want to grow what you can eat okay but that's a little different for me i wanted to, to show you guys different things because a lot of people did not believe that you can grow in containers and in buckets like you really can so i had to show you i had a lot of people that was like no way i'm like yes 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 this is how we did it back home um grown in containers y'all buckets or whatever you know whatever that was nice and safe to grow in okay you don't grow in everything um but yeah i am getting rid of a lot of these tomato plants so stay tuned and watch goodness y'all there was a lot of flies over here because like i said all that rain a lot of these little tomatoes burst open and the flies was at them you see them on the ground right there a lot of them little tomatoes burst open and it felt like um, mosquitoes was biting my arm <laughs> it was a lot y'all it was a lot all i could think about was hurry up and get this done because it's got to be done so you can go shower because oh my goodness i feel like every bug was on me but i needed to get this stuff cleaned up and this is an important thing that you have to do for your guard especially when mother nature does what she want to do and bring all that rain all those bugs and beetles and stuff like that is going to come but you got to get out there and clean that up if you don't clean it up and keep it night and tight nice and tidy and i said night y'all nice and tidy then um you're gonna have a problem okay and y'all know i like to keep 
things nice, clean, and tidy. And that goes for the garden too. Not just your home or yourself. Your garden has to stay that way too. Because remember, bugs are attracted to a lot of plants that are sick, okay? Or in distress, all right? Midnight snack, yeah. The midnight snack. I'm gonna move it over to the very end. Um, let's just kind of get it out of the way if I can. I was struggling a little bit with it, so just continuing to clean things up, y'all. Because oh my goodness, the gourd, oh my goodness, the gourd is over there and everything. Um, I had to cut it loose from my blueberry um, plants. And my blackberry bush and I'm gonna end up cutting my blackberry bush too and I just wanted to get some of the uh, fruit like the melons and stuff like that where they can have more space to you know vine out and grow and produce because they are producing a lot which y'all will see um, later on in this video coming very very soon you're gonna see it um, not too much longer okay y'all gonna see it in a minute so i hope you are continuing to enjoy y'all
Alright y'all, so right here we are dealing with the melons, different type of melons, cantaloupe, watermelon, vine, peach, mango, melon, you name it. <laughs> so that's what we was doing right here, um, hubby was helping me by filling some of the buckets up that needed some more dirt um, on top to make sure the roots don't show, because sometimes that happens um, when you water it and water it you know the dirt move around so that's what we was doing right here making sure everything was good and then you're gonna see us pulling some apart because some of the vines was like all wrapped around each other and going from one pot to the other so we just kind of like straighten it out and everything to let everything know hey now you got more room you can just grow and flower and produce some yummy yummy fruit y'all some yummy fruit so that's right now my Okay. 